the Lord. Well, Toronto's well, you have miracles coming your way. Lots of them. It's good to see you again. And uh, youth, I, they tell me you're staying in here tonight. So uh, I will have some highlighted points for you tonight. You be sure you emphasize this with your mother in the preparedness class. How's that? All of you said amen. Uh, and your father as well. So uh, let's hold our Bibles up. Lord, we commit this time to you. We ask you to lead us and guide us and direct us and to help us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And uh, it's good to see you tonight. The Lord bless you. Josh Kirkhoff, would you shut that door for me on the right? Yeah, right there. If you would, please. It, uh, it's uh, causing a reflection in here tonight. All right. I, I will. Uh, this is a preparedness class. And so, Lord, help me in Jesus' name. I need a lot of help. And uh, you that are out there and you that are here, go ahead and tell us one. I'm not going to turn this off until, and the next one too. Uh, the, the one, no, right there where you were, brother. Just both doors. That's the door right there. Yeah, thank you very much. May the Lord bless you with longevity of life and quality. Amen. And often I say a 15-passenger van. At least you could use it to help all those families with their children. Let's see, where was I? Preparedness class. All right, now, so far in preparedness class, as Pastor Tracy mentioned earlier, if you have not been here, go online. You can watch the classes. I recommend it. And one of them was basic preparedness for your home. Fire alarms, carbon dioxide, detectors, how you turn the water off, things like that. Very practical. And also, Mr. Buddy heaters, camp stoves, the second one, refilling propane tanks, etc. And the third one was on generators to help you run your home. And everybody said, we got it, Pastor. Now, <clears throat> uh, I have had some response as I've been teaching these classes. Well, quite a bit, actually. And some pastors, uh, Pastor Isaac, would you bring me a Kleenex, please? Some pastors within the last few months, several actually, they've had tornadoes in their area. Uh, if I remember what some of them told me, they had uh, watched the classes. They went right out, got a generator, some of them, went right out and got uh, cook stoves, etc. And they had tornadoes in their area, several different areas. Some of them were without electricity, as I understand it, three days. Some of them were out without power for 10 days. So they were expressing gratitude for the classes, that they had actually watched the classes. They had what they needed. They could keep their refrigerators going. They could... <clears throat> take care of their food and cook their meals, and they could be helpful to other families. Praise the Lord. And that's our mentality. Now, there are two verses I want to build on here tonight. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, and verse 40. And if you could turn that down, the, the uh, piano, just a little bit in the monitor for me. 14, 33, for God is not the author of confusion. Now, the opposite of that is he's the order, he's the God of order. So reach up here just symbolically and grab a hold of order. And order is in life all around us, and he's the God of order. And uh, for God is not the author of confusion, but he is the God of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Now, I'm, I'm going to just begin tonight in preparedness for food. Let's say together, for food. Now, if you'll bear with me, I, I, I do believe that as we listen and look at the Word of God, that this class can help us. But probably not a lot of people are going to be real excited about this topic and what I have to say. And some of you out there watching this, Brother Joe, you may want to turn this off. But if you'll listen through I believe it will help us. Praise the Lord. Face a lifetime challenge, even if you live to be very, very old. And go ahead and turn around and tell somebody, I plan on being very, very old before I go home with the Lord. Now, when we talk about in preparedness class and talking about having food and being prepared, remember, I think it's called an acronym, KISS. Say it together, KISS. Now, you may have heard it said differently out there, but in church, keep it simple, saint. All right, let's say it together. Keep it simple, saint. So I start talking about preparedness and storing food. I hope to dial you in in a very practical way. 
And as soon as we start talking about it, you can come up with all kinds of excuses about why you don't need this, don't want to hear it, and are not going to do it. So you may say, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have the space. But in reality, we do. And if you'll bear with me, I'll show you some simple practices that can help us that are very practical in life and won't waste any money, all right? So th this is like the way I was raised. And this is what I believe the Bible teaches us. And we can learn from the Bible and we can uh, um, implement these principles from the Word and change our lives and help many people. Amen? Now, make getting started simple. So say it with me, simple steps. And, and wherever you are right now, you may look and think, my goodness, how can I ever get there? Let's say it together, one step at a time. Remember in the, uh, what's that book of records? What do they call that? Yeah, Guinness Book of Records. There's a man that ate a car. I turn around and tell somebody, a human being ate an entire car. Now, how many of you know he did that one day at a time? He ground the car up, and he would just eat a small spoonful of metal every day for a long time, and the car disappeared. I'm not recommending that. What I am recommending is the small step process. So when you begin something, you're not overwhelmed with the size of it, but you realize this is what the Bible says, and this is what I'm going to do a small step at a time, and God will give us grace. He'll meet you in your step of faith. Let's say it He'll meet you in your step of faith. Now, uh, we're approaching this preparedness in food, not from a survival mentality, which I've mentioned, not from a fortress mentality, but from a mentality of having a home. So say this with me, my house is my home. And it's comfortable, it's safe, and it's welcoming. It's a true haven for your family, for your friends, and for your guests, whoever they may be, as you reach out in hospitality. Uh, uh, my approach to all of this, especially, is to help us be prepared for natural type of disasters that may happen. So you can go ahead and have your house be a home, help sustain your family, and reach out to others and help others. And we all say it. So if there are storms or even if the grids that we rely upon to run in our society are shut down for whatever reason, we can continue to take care of basics and help each other. Let's turn that keyboard down in these monitors just a little bit more. Thank you, brother. Now, uh, just hold your wallet out for a minute, uh, symbolically. And say this with me, I'm going to purchase supplies without damaging my finances. All right, so we're going to take a real practical step to do some things that will prepare us uh, in the event of a storm or grids shut down uh, to take care of our families, take care of our needs, and even help community and reach out to them. So we don't want to waste money. Now, if I step on some toes tonight, all I can say is, in advance, I'm sorry. It seems I have a gift of doing that without even trying. So if I say something that maybe you don't like or don't agree with, well, just ask God for grace. And remember, it's a sin to be offended, right? And, and maybe some of your thinking might be challenged. And so if you listen, uh, perhaps there's some, uh, well, maybe newfound logic in the Word that could actually help you prepare for times of trouble, but maintain the right outlook. Uh, it, following one of our prophetic gatherings not too long ago, this would have been prior to COVID, uh, I had some people come to me towards the end of the conference during the time we eat together in the East Third, and they uh, proposed a, uh, a situation to me or in the form of a question. I answered it in the form of a question. And they said, you know, Pastor, we've never been here before, but this is different than prophetic gatherings we've been to. Why do you think that is? I said, well, I haven't been where you've been, but <clears throat> uh, what do you mean it's different? Well, 
uh, I feel, we feel different. So, well, what do you mean you feel different? Well, we're leaving here like full of faith. I said, well, what did you leave the other gatherings feeling? Well, full of fear. I said, well, apparently you've answered your own question. The difference is you left there full of fear. You're leaving here full of faith. He says, and I said, you know, what do you think about that? Well, I don't know. I said, well, is fear of God or not? What is, I had them read Hebrews 11, 7. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hello? So grab hold of faith. Hebrews 12, 1, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. All faith comes from the Lord. And without this faith in operation and working, it's impossible to please God. And every time that an angel spoke to someone or when Jesus brought a message moving them towards raising the dead or other things, he would often say, and the angel would say what? Fear not. So let's go like this. No fear. You learn to cast your cares on the Lord. Fear has, is a power. So is faith. Faith has the ability and the, the power to bring things to you from God. Fear has the power to bring things to you that are not from God. So we want to be rid of fear and operate in faith. And faith simply put is this. I believe God's going to do what God said he would do. You could have two houses next to each other. One prepared for natural disasters or grid failure, and everyone come out of that, whole, that home with a very positive experience. You can have a house right next to it, unprepared, and they will not come out of that situation with a positive experience. They'll probably need counseling. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Now, we don't want to waste money. So I'm going to begin very practically in my approach to this, so if you'd bear with me, say with me, I don't want to waste money because we're stewards. We're stewards of God's money, so we don't want to be wasteful, right? Praise the Lord. Now, or, like, a, like in a boat, an or, and I want to use that as an acronym, meaning to organize, to acquire, and rotate supplies. So say it together, organize. Now, here's where some of you are going to shut me off. You could be sitting in here acting like you're listening and shut me off. You could be out there and just turn the thing off. As soon as I said organize, Joe ran over there and turned off the computer. But thank God, Jenny says, leave that alone, and turned it back on. Hi, Jenny. Praise the Lord. Organize. Now, let's say together, I'm organized, and I'm having fun with Joe, all right? But uh, even though you may be organized, how many of you know there might be a little room for improvement? Three of us agree. So uh, we're going to talk to ourselves. The rest of you will just have to follow along. Now, I'm talking about food preparedness, right? Now, food preparedness is going to need you to be organized. So here's some very simple, very practical ways to do this. And now remember, I'm going to just give us some guidelines and some principles. And so you and your life and your home and your needs are going to need to be done differently than others. All right? Say again, I got that. Generally speaking. So, num I'm going to start out here. Number one, organize what you have. So, let's say together, organize what we have. And then number two, I'm giving this as an assignment. You'll talk together as a family. And I involve the children and youth to be involved in this conversation at some level. Identify what your future needs might be, and then organize additional room for supplies. Now, this can be done without spending a lot of money because in most of our cases, there's a lot of space that can become available when we remove things that don't need to be there anymore. Hello? I tried to make this applicable to almost everybody that has ears. So, <laughs> I'm going to give you some principles very related to what every housewife did as a way of life just a generation or a few generations ago. And they preserve food for the coming year. Now, I want you to say it with me. 
preserve food for the coming year plus in case next year's garden had a problem. Last year, when my mother and, and dad and I helped a little bit plant the garden, we had a big frost. It was killing frost. So we planted basically a second garden. Well, the first garden was not informed that it had frosted a deadly frost. We had double blessing last year. We had nightmares of green beans for the entire winter. I'm only saying that in fun. We, we've been doing what housewives and families did, and that's not a prejudice statement. It's not a bias statement. It's not uh, in any way negative. It's the way life was where we grew up. Mom and grandma are going to take care of preserving the things we need for the year plus. Hello? And the men, the, the grandfathers, fathers, uncles, etc., the boys, they're going to build and do and produce and generate income. And we're all going to work together and have finances to pay the bills. Hello? And we're going to have an abundant supply of food for the year plus. Go ahead and tell somebody. I wasn't thinking like 18 months or two years. I was thinking like, you know, two or three days. Okay, now remember, steps. I'm not suggesting that everybody should have food stored in their house for 12 or 15 or 18 months. So just mellow out before you get weird on me from some of the weird stuff you've done and learned in the past. Okay, now, <clears throat> we preserve food for the coming year plus. Now, grandpa and grandma and mom and dad were not paranoid, isolated survivalists. Grab a hold of that. Dear Jesus, nor should the church be. The church should not have this mentality of being a paranoid, isolated survivalist. No one will want to go to your house and have a meal. You'll bolt the door shut, serve his beans in some kind of a cup with guns sticking out all the windows. No, we don't need that. All right. You're sitting there wondering, is everything all right? Everything's all right except the host. All right. <laughs> Now, not a paranoid, isolated, survivalist mentality, but prepared. Mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, we, we didn't wonder, what are we going to do if we have a blizzard? We didn't wonder what's going to happen when the electricity goes off. Not if, when. We, we didn't even think like that, and, and I still don't think like that, and don't want us to think like that. Hello? And, and you, well, why is he emphasizing that? Because of what's out there in the church. So in the 70s, I helped pastor people try to get out of that mentality in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 2000s, the 2010s. Like, no, we really don't need to dig a hole in the ground and buy a bunch of guns and get some beans. Well, we could get a can of beans and some hot dogs and cook them and eat them, but like enough beans for... Like decades? Oh, uh, John tells me we don't need that. So <laughs> they were prepared for crop failures. They were prepared for epidemics. They were prepared for blizzards. Not only for themselves, but to help a neighbor. It may be maybe fell and broke a leg while they were feeding the cows or taking care of hogs or who knows what. That we were there to help each other. Hello? Now, if you would take time later to read Proverbs together, chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. This talks about a, a wise woman, from a wise woman, woman, giving advice to a king that's not so wise. And he would be blessed to follow the advice of his mother. There's 21 verses here that are very important and very related to the topic of preparedness. Hello? Let's say together, amen. And now, if, if given time, I'll try to come back to that. 
Now, the supplies you're going to put away is an individual matter. So grab a hold of that. Your situation may be different than others. Is Pastor Eric still here? He, he, oh, good. I can talk about him a little bit then. You can have him watch it online, okay? So your situation may change a little. I had the privilege of going to Mexico with Pastor Isaac and Pastor Eric. They are both of, of Mexican descent. I believe Pastor Eric was born there. Well, when we arrived, I'm going to call them boys because for now I'm going to call them boys. They, they, like I'm their dad, you know. My oldest son will be 45 in November. Hello? So they're like boys to me. I'm telling you, those boys ate like I never saw a human being eat, I don't think. They ate like they hadn't eaten in months. Their legs were hollow. I just watched and thought, oh my. They didn't offend anybody. They weren't being rude. In fact, I think everybody was thrilled that two human beings could eat so much. We, uh, my grandson came over the other day, my, one of my younger grandsons, and he's growing, and he's playing football. And he went over to the stove. Grandma had prepared food, and everybody was getting their food. And he took a huge portion of chicken. And I watched, and I thought to myself, I don't know if this is humanly possible. It was. I was shocked. Hello? Now, why did I tell you those stories? Supplies put away is an individual matter. You may be raising a lumberjack. You may be raising six little yahoos, yahoos, jehus. Jehu? Oh, man, that tore me up. I could, I could sleep for days laughing over that one at night. I lay down at night, jehu, W-H-O, like, oh, Jesus, help me. All right, so... I also learned a lot. They use language. I don't even know what they're talking about. A mimi? What's a mimi? It's like, you know, a what? Yeah, that. I'm like, what is he talking about from the lectern? Is that something our children should even have heard? In their testimony in 15 minutes, I learned three things I never even knew existed. None related to the Bible. <laughs> you may be raising teenage kids. So mellow out, say get a mellow out. And this is going to require some individualism as you make some decisions. Hello? Now, you may be just responsible for you. You may be just you may be responsible for an entire household. You may be responsible for an extended family. All right? So bear with me a moment. And when I tell you some things I've done or some things my wife and I have done, our situation is not just like yours and you should not pattern yourself after me. You remember the prepared session where I had the cook stoves here and very, I'd say, well, there's all kinds of cook stoves. Go online, find wherever you want. I don't care. Go find wherever you want. I use this one. It costs this much at Walmart. Now go do whatever you want. <clears throat> Hello? And you may have some better ideas or some bad ideas, but that one has worked for decades. Now, hold, hold your hand out. I own at least 30 of those. Why? Who said that? Wow. Oh, wow and why. That's two different things. Wow, like, yeah, 30. That guy's crazy. Well, uh, there's another type I, I have, a, a Cervais. Cervais, made in Sweden. Mine are the only ones made in Sweden. Uh, they sold out of business later. And then they were made in, I think, Taiwan. Then they were made in China. I don't own them from Taiwan. I don't own them from China. I own them from Sweden. Some of them are, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 years old. I probably only have 30 or 40 of those. Now, they all work perfectly. I bought them over the years for virtually nothing. Now, why would I have 60 cook stoves? Anybody, any ideas? What'd you say? I can help people later on that need them. I also have 14 grandchildren. Hello? And so... Now, I don't plan on dying with all that. In fact, I was thinking today when I give this testimony, uh, that everything that's in that shed, labeled and organized in totes, it's also treated so there's no pests in it. All of that will be given away before very long. 
and then I'll give the shed away. And I'm thinking, there'll be people lining up to get my shed. Now, your situation is different than mine. But mine is not extreme. I have five generators. I don't need five generators for me. Hello? All right. So you're thinking, well, I don't need to buy one. I know where to borrow one. <laughs> we had an ice storm once. I think we were without electricity. If I remember right, Jane would remember, but she's not here tonight. She's gone, which gives me a little liberty to say some things that, well, it'll take a while to catch up to me. I think we were out of electricity 20 or 21 days in our area. Uh, and a lot of people without electricity a long time. So we were without about as long as anyone or longer. Uh, I knew an ice storm was coming, so I drove 90 miles uh, where there's family and friends, and I got some extra generators. I threw some sledgehammers and some chainsaws and gear in the back of my truck so I could get home. Now, why would I need chainsaws and sledgehammers? I'd get back through the trees. I would have to break the ice off, cut the trees, drag them out of the way, and drive home. I was getting back no matter what. Now, it's important you think like that. Say it with me. I'm coming back no matter what. Now, the people you pastor today and the people you lead today and the generations behind you need to hear that from men in church. I'll be back. I'm not leaving. And when I get back, I'll take care of things, and I'm leaving to go so I can get back and take care of things. I will be back. Say it with me. I'll be back. You know, I've told you that for years since I was 38. I'll be back. And I have kept coming back. Some of you are thinking, well, I just do not come back, but if y'all are okay. But here I am. Now, I came back and several men, I distributed those generators, and we would work for 21 days, night and day. And we went to neighborhood neighborhoods, took care of the church family, but we also took care of community. And so we pumped water for livestock. We charged up uh, and uh, refrigerators. Hello? Now, <clears throat> grab a hold of that mentality. That's what the church is. That's what we do. We are interdependent, not independent, not codependent. We help each other. And there's enough of us now, if we're all here at the same time, we're from like 18 counties. And so... The needs just in 18 counties are going to vary. They're not going to be the same. So we, we can be on call and have people help us in all kinds of situations, right? Now, who are you responsible for? And as you're writing some of these things down and as you're looking ahead, I think I gave you three assignments, right? Organize what you have, identify what your future needs might be, and organize room for supplies. Now, let's just focus on that. Organize. Or, remember, like paddle a boat with? Organize. Say it with me, organize. I want to talk about that in a little bit because, well, we can't store food for a year. Yes, you really can, but for a long time. You'll be okay. We'll work on that. Everybody all right? A little later on, probably next session, I will talk about some of the foods you might want to store, although I'm going there really quite a bit today. And I want to talk about water. What's going to be your biggest need if things shut down you don't have grid systems? Water. And we'll talk a lot about that later on. Now, uh, purchase all at once, some might, or over time, probably almost all of us will. You decide. Don't pressure yourself. You've got to have a generator, got to have this, got to have that. No, no, no. You'll be fine. You'd be surprised what you can do with a bag of charcoal and, you know, 100 hot dogs. Now, in the right condition, a bag of charcoal and 100 hot dogs, you could lead a lot of people to Jesus. They'd actually listen to you while you grilled the hot dogs, talk about the Lord because they want a hot dog. Okay, moving right along. You converse with your family in, and, and work together in planning stages based on your income and establish some common goals. Now, when Jane and I went to, well, when I went to Alaska and Jane went with me once, that was quite an ordeal because my wife can sleep. And that's one of the benefits of being organized. Did you know that? Being able to sleep. My wife can sleep. My wife's highly organized. We were up there in the winter, and I would just like have to drag her out of bed and try to wake her up. 
I said, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's 11. It can't be. It's dark. I'm going back to bed. She would sleep for six months up there. And I'd say, no, come with me. Watch. See, now watch. Right down there is the sun. That's the sun down there. Yeah, that little ball right there. Now watch. Whoop. Oh, it's gone. It's gone in an hour. Like, whoop, a little ball goes up and over. It stays dark where you're at the whole time. Now, they plan their food for over a year. They will receive supplies from a barge once a year. So when I'm talking about principles here, hello, they vary based on individual needs. All right, so grab hold of that. We're not all in the same boat. Now, remember, there's people out there with different situations than us. I want, to practice, I want to approach this very practically. Hello? And I wanted to see, well, how do you keep this frozen? Because there's no electricity up here in some places where I was. And we climbed down a ladder, a hand-dug shaft, about 40 feet into the earth where they dug a room. And it's way below freezing down there. That's where they keep their food for the year. Plus, if the bear falls in, they got one trap down there they can eat later on. All right. Now... Uh, help me, Lord. So let's say together, plan and prepare. Now, here's a goal. You can take a note on this. Uh, I would advise that you plan to prepare to store enough food to meet your most pressing needs for three days. All right, say together, three days. That's a good place to start. And... Uh, and this is also enough if you have to evacuate. Ploom, 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 ploom. It's in a bag and out the door you go. Now, you may be thinking, evacuate? Well, we don't have to evacuate hardly ever here. But how many of you know there are people that live where there are fires and or hurricanes and or other elements that, okay, we need to be ready to leave. Now, We'll talk later on about an evacuation plan in the event of a fire and organizing your family. How to get down out of the upstairs, how, where to meet at. Hello? We'll cover that later. You may think that's not important. It's very important. You need a plan for evacuation. You need a meeting place. Now, we're not doing that out of fear. We're doing that out of wisdom. Then you can move up to a uh, two-week supply. So you got a two-week supply. And then you can add over time, one week at a time until you reach your goals. Maybe you would like to have enough in your home to take care of your family's needs or your needs or whatever the case may be for a couple months. Now go ahead and say with me, that's not unrealistic. Not at all. Okay, so I want to give us some guidelines for that. Let's say together, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And... You ever been in the Midwest when they're predicting a snowstorm coming? First of all, they're really bad at predicting anything accurately. And I think the grocery stores pay them to do it. But if they tell you a snowstorm's coming for much over an inch, or that, you know, God forbid it's three inches tall and we get eight inch drifts, you go to the grocery store, you got to have on the fruit of the Spirit clothes. Because everybody's all messed up, all the food's gone. Praise the Lord. Say together, praise the Lord. I mean, you know, 80-year-old women with canes will be fighting over the last gallon of milk. Okay, well, praise God. Say together, praise God. Now, this would perhaps, as you make plans and goals, involve the purchase of durable goods to take care of needs like a lantern or a cook stove, etc., which we covered that earlier. You don't have to do all this at once. You can do this in small pieces. And these are things that you could use on a picnic. You could use camping. You could use on a job site. We use generators for years on job sites. They say, well, now, Pastor, we got battery-powered stuff. Yeah, I know. I understand that. However, there are a lot of jobs where you plug in a generator, you got a whole lot more power. It's a lot faster, lasts a lot longer. And that's all I want to say about that because people out there in la-la land, I mean in viewing land, are arguing with me. Now, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, not preparing to isolate from the world. 
That's not what we're doing. But rather, we are actually preparing to build local community here and where we live and still be able to function in our interdependence. Grab hold of that. So we're not preparing something here to isolate us and survive while everybody else suffers. Hello? I'm, I'm still young enough that if it's bad out, I just got to get out in it and drive my truck, just see if I can. It's not the wisest thing in the world, maybe, but nonetheless, my wife's like, it's really bad out. Yes, I know. I've got to go. Where? Just, I'm going to go drive. It's bad out. I know. I'll be back. Now, but the older I get, the more I like the inside of the house where it's comfortable. Now, but as soon as the grandkids mention it, I'm gone. Now, I told you one a story that we had a uh, storm, a bad one. I woke up and my youngest, I'd been traveling a lot. My youngest daughter and my youngest son were right there. Oh, my eyes are still dark. Daddy, can we go sledding? Yeah, great idea. And, well, we need a new sled. Great idea. Let's go get it right now. Walmart's open. We jumped in my truck and took off on 600 North. And, oh boy, Sega, oh boy, I wasn't aware how deep this was, so uh, man, I was moving it. And there were like two Hummers with National Guard stuck down in the ditches over by where McDonald's is now. Like, buried. It was like four or five feet deep, so I mean, I was moving. Say this together, momentum's your friend. In those situations, momentum is your friend. And we were blowing through drifts five and six feet tall and the snow just covering these soldiers and their Hummers. And I thought, well, this is strange. And I went to Walmart. Now, you ever been to Walmart when no one was at Walmart? I was at Walmart when no one was at Walmart except one man. He was the manager sitting in there. He said, what are you doing here? I said, we're here to buy sleds. He said, did you know the governor issued a what, what, what? What do you call it? It's a state of emergency. No one's supposed to be out. I said, this is an emergency. We need sleds. Come with me, he said, and he sold us sleds. So we went flying back through there, snow blowing everywhere, and the National Guard guys are still trying to dig out these Hummers. Jordan was going berserk. Yeah! He was hollering to those soldiers. I had to roll the window down so they could hear, and we just kept right on going. Now, listen. Frame of mind matters. Grab a hold of that. A lot. And we want to have the right frame of mind. Well, once you get started and it's six feet deep, you cannot stop. You just have to let her rip. Let her say again, let her rip. We ought to make a t-shirt. White horse, let her rip. <laughs> that should be the name of the next women's conference. Let her rip. Yeah. So not, we're not preparing to isolate from the world, but to build local community, to be here to help people, to be able to function our, in our interdependence, not independent, not codependent, but where interdependence, it just go like this, where we actually, we're here to help each other. So let's look at some fact, some practical food storage and let's avoid all kind of mess. I think I spelled the word botulism. Does that sound right? That's something you want to avoid, right? That's like really sick. Throwing up all over the place. See, I even made that so children could hear it. Or, you're welcome. Or, say together, or. Organize, acquire, and rotate. Say together, organize, acquire, and rotate. That's all we're talking about. So, avoid uh, a maddening lifestyle of treasure hunting when you need something. Organization will help do that. If you have a husband in your life or one that may become a husband, you will hear him saying things like, where did I leave that flashlight? Where are the tweezers? I can't find Band-Aids. God forbid you can't find the peanut butter and Lord only knows where the scissors are. Hello? So let's say it together. Organization will help ease all that pressure, mellow out, they're where they always are. How many of you men have been told that? No, they're not. I looked. <laughs> you're going to have, <laughs> the kids that you're going to have to memorize. <laughs> 
Where'd you look? Well, I looked. They're not there. Yes, they're there. Walk him over, show it to him. See? Oh, Isaac will say, someone put that there while I was gone. There's no one here but us. I know. They snuck in. Organized for everyday life. And now say it with me. Clutter-free is the best management. Now, be careful. That's, that's, for, that's advice for you. Don't give that to somebody else. Hello? Sometimes Linda will send me a text. Can I clean your desk right now? No, don't touch it. I know it looks like a mess, but I know where it's at, and I'm not ready to change it yet. A little later on, yeah, you can change it. All right? We have a spare bedroom at home, and I use it to study and write and prepare a lot. And, and I, I shut the door, and I tell my wife, do not open that door. She's highly organized. Don't change anything. My notebooks, my Bible don't change anything. I know right where I'm at, and I'm coming back. And she never promises me she won't. I just know I better not be gone long. Pastor Hector and Sammy came to my house before the conference. They came a little early so we could meet. And I just took a little, little tour through the house. And I said, this is where I work and study and prepare. And Sammy could hardly walk out of there. And Hector was all messed up. And it was the glory. And my wife said, I know it's a mess, isn't it? And they, It's a matter of perspective. They weren't thinking about disorder. They're thinking, oh, man. I said, yeah, that's just the last two days. You ought to see inside my brain. No, don't. No, don't. Organize, acquire, and rotate. Say again, organize, acquire, and rotate. Because we're going to be good stewards. We're not going to waste money here. Whew. And organization will help us avoid going crazy. Now. Yes, he says, praise God. Organized for everyday life, clutter-free is best management. Life is not easy. Hello? Come on, tell us In case you didn't know it, life can be really hard. Especially in the middle of a world of clutter. All right. Ra, 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 ra. I heard that, buddy. Brother Jim, I think he's talking to you. Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, okay. Uh, many of the problems, I'm trying to read my writing because I was in a hurry. Many of our problems in storage space will disappear if we just clean out the space. Go ahead and tell us about it. That's right, but it's hard to do. It's not easy to do. So the organization process gives us opportunity to determine our family needs and our individual needs. And when we go through different phases of life to make changes. So if you are a gatherer, and a lot of people are, praise the Lord, uh, some time to organize is gonna help you. So even the Bible, there's times of gathering and there's also times to give it away. Now, some homes, garages or whatever, look like a thrift store that has exploded with a bomb. <laughs> uh, now, if you want to live in that, go ahead. But if I tried to live like that, well, we would need marriage help. Now, <laughs> just because it's on sale, everybody say this, just because it's on sale or a bargain, go like that, a bargain doesn't mean we should buy it and carry it home. Joe. <laughs> uh, I love Joe. And don't worry, he'll get even with me. All right. Just because it's on sale or a bargain doesn't mean we should buy it. And it certainly doesn't mean we need it now. And we may never need it. Joe would go out and buy supplies. We'd be building and working. And he'd have something in the bag. I bought this for you. And I'd look in there and think, well, I'll never need this if I live to be as old as Methuselah. So I give it away. Now, to organize, purge out, stay together, purge it out. And some of you are thinking, oh, no, I was wanting to hear about a generator or something, not this. Whew. Well, first of all, if you do everything at once, you're going to have a bigger mess than when you started. 
So, keep it simple, saint. Ready? Ready? Say it. Keep it simple, saint. Take one room or one space or one closet or one shelf at a time. The top shelf in my dresser in my closet is a mess. But right down here at the left side, our, I ordered them online myself from Google. I couldn't believe it. I'd only got one set, not a hundred or whatever. And it came to the right house. It's the only time I've ever done it. I mean, it's the only time I ever ordered anything. It arrived. Now, one day, I'm going to take everything out of that top shelf, and you snap these things together, and you can put everything in there in compartments. Hello? Someday, I'll get to that. But not in the next two weeks, I assure you. That is like blizzard snowed in material. Or like I'm dying and just got home from the hospital, I'll sneak in there and work on that and sneak out. My wife likes it actually when I get surgery because I lay there in bed thinking about that closet. And I tell myself, I'm going to organize that closet. Every time I go to the hospital, my, when I get well enough to come preach, my closets are immaculate. I sometimes wonder if she didn't poison me just to get the closet clean. I'm saying that in fun, but she may be repenting right now. I don't know. So designate an area, take everything out. Say it together. Get everything out of there. Peggy, are you taking good notes? <laughs> Put a chain on him and lock him in here until we're done. Take everything out one at a time. You know, a cabinet, drawer, closet, or whatever. And look at whatever it is. Clothes, books, toys, sports equipment, small electric gadgets. And be ruthless. If you didn't use it, fix it, wear it, read it, or play with it in a year, it's junk. Can I hear an amen? If you haven't used it, if you haven't fixed it, if you haven't whatever in a year, it's junk. Give it away, throw it away, sell it, whatever, get it out of there. Okay, praise the Lord. Say it, praise the Lord. Some of you are thinking, man, I wish we'd have learned this a long time ago. Our marriage would be better. Now, what are we doing? Making space for what we began saying, can't afford it, don't have room, can't do it. Oh, yeah, you can if you organize. Now, that rusty bike, you'll never ride it again. Those old skis, God forbid anybody ride those things. Uh, the golf clubs, catch them. Baby clothes, man, we gave ours away. <laughs> Hello? Get rid of them. Now, we're getting somewhere. Food preparedness. Say together, food preparedness. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, six years ago, this July, on the hottest day of the year, we moved my parents. It only took a small army and six semis. We, we did it all in one day. If you go to the state park here in Indiana, south of here, a ways, quite a ways, they have a museum there, the largest geode in Indiana. It's not. The one my parents have is three or four times bigger than that. It's like fell out of the skies thing. And we got it sitting on a trailer and we've hauled all this. We're exhausted, soaking wet, tired. And Toby was helping me. And we pulled up so we wouldn't crush a wall. And mom wanted that rock right here by this pillar that holds up the porch. I'm like, okay, now Toby, I'm gonna shove this off. And Toby, you're gonna like, Try to run for your life so it doesn't kill you. It landed on its edge on the side and started rolling. And I jumped off after and I said, get it, Toby. Let's roll it. And it rolled where it's supposed to go and fell over. And I said, we got an angel. We had an angel. All those men there couldn't pick that rock up and move it. It landed, it rolled to where it went. Don't call me and ask me to move your rocks because that was a God one in a lifetime deal. Any other time, we would have broke the wall, knocked the porch down or whatever. 
Toby caught on when I said, get it. We can roll it. Momentum's our friend. Remember the snow? You learned something tonight. Momentum's your friend. All right, now, we moved mom and dad six years ago. We moved three years ago. Then my daughter moved. I fixed up all the houses, redid all the bathrooms, put in all the trim, all the cove, all everything. It's a wonder I'm still alive. But it wasn't really bad because I only had five surgeries and about died once. But anyhow, here we are. We went through COVID. Some people were mad enough to shoot me, but didn't. At least they didn't hit when they fired. So all my sheds before, now when we lived there in Battleview, every, all the shelves were built and labeled and the garage and all everything labeled and all my sheds were labeled. Hello. Same thing out on where we used to live. Can't remember the name of the street right now. <laughs> Tower Road. And then we moved. Oh, no. Say it again. Oh, no. All my tools, all my log chains, all my binders, everything. Lord help. Say it again. Lord help. So when we first moved, you know, we went from, I don't know, 3,500 square feet to 2,500. Now we're down to 1,100. My garage looked like a disaster. Now go like this. My garage looked like a disaster. For some of us, this is near crisis. For some of us, it doesn't bother us at all. The roof, it was stacked to the roof, Brother Jim, from wall to wall, end to end, and I'm going to distribute that over two years and give it all away. I'm not quite done, but I'm really close. I can park my car in there and my motorcycle. Little did I know that I was also making space in both garages for a daycare that now has five of our grandchildren in it on a regular basis and one more on the way that I know of. Now, say it with me. Organization is lifelong. I got everything down to a little bit of that garage and one shop. Now, here's a rule. Write down rule. Don't open a new container until the old one is used up. Yeah, amen. Say it again. Amen. And the container is discarded or recycled. I tried not to throw anything away when my wife was in the house. Ah, that's recyclable. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, relax. Okay, I'll get it out of the trash and I'll carry it over there. God forbid. She, she has eyes in the back of her head. Do you take that recycling in and throw it in the trash? No, uh-uh. I lie not. It's in the recycling bin. Good. Now, grab a hold of some of that. Commitment to free up some space as you clean out and organize space. Pay attention to the kitchen. Say together, pay attention to the kitchen. I'm gonna, you may not agree with this, but it's the heart of the home. It's command center. It's central control. That kitchen's vitally important. When there's no electricity, when there's a storm, or in the most perfect conditions, it's the command center. And well stocked makes a big difference. It's the difference of comfort and misery, abundance and nothing. That kitchen. Let's just grab a hold of that and say together, amen. So we're getting rid of clutter and we're making space to store what matters. And we're having organizing organizations so we have peace of mind. Well, next time I'm supposed to talk about water, but I'm going to have to continue with this. And I'm going to give you some lists of foods that are good for you based on what you're going to do after this lesson. Okay? But good for you to store. Now, you want as much as your stored food to stay in your kitchen as you can. Now, husband, say it together. The wife has priority. One more time. Wife has priority. Everything in the house. Every shelf every area. What do you need? What do you want? How can I help you organize? What would you like here? What would you like here? What would you like here? Hello? Somebody say amen. Women ought to be saying amen, pastor. These don't belong here. Anything that doesn't belong in the house finds itself out by the door on a shelf. That means I better get it out of here or it's going to be gone. Praise the Lord. Say together, praise the Lord. Rotate stock. This is a key to reduce waste and avoid 
difficult to access space. Okay, say again, I got it. Fi- uh, an accounting principle for uh, inventory, first in, first out. And that's what you're going to do with your food. First in, first out, accessible space. Say again, accessible space. All too often, when you talk about food preparedness, you're dealing with mindsets of emergency food supplies. All you teenagers say this, bad idea. Most of the emergency food supply you buy tastes like Cheerio boxes. Not the Cheerios, the box. Do not buy that and store it in your attic for a year or 10 years. You're building a house for mice and that's to invite snakes. And I don't like either one. Let alone the food that is in there, that's not food. Amen. Now, all too often, emergency food supplies are stored in out-of-the-way spaces like attics and sheds. Turn around to this body. Bad idea. Many ministries have made untold millions off the church over bad ideas. I'm just going to say it right up front. If you get mad about it, there's deliverance for that. See Pastor Bobby after the session. It's best to dedicate space for food storage in living area in your home where you have access. Okay, grab that. That's best. Or you may have a cellar or basement or storm cellar because that's related to temperature, air control, moisture, etc. That's a little different topic. We'll get there later. Now, avoid inconvenient spaces to store food. So, we have food stored in our house. But we'd last way longer than three months. We'd last a long, long time. Long time. All kinds of food. Now, simple things like you can get bed razors. And I think it's called a bed ruffle, right? Hang down, hides the razors, and hides what you got underneath. Did I say all that right? I just call it a piece of cloth around the bottom. But it's pretty, and women don't call it a towel or something. They What? That's it. And underneath there, we have these totes. They have wheels on them. You roll them in, roll them out. There's over 100 quarts of green beans in there. Now, the ones right by the door on the top are labeled 2021. Say together 2021. Because you always have more than enough for the next year. You may have to have a second garden. Preparedness. Now, it's filled up now. And this pantry area in my daughter's house is getting filled up now. And they say 2022. Say it together, first in, first out. Come on, first in, first out. You have space that can be organized if you just put thought to it. Okay, grab a hold of that. And if you aren't good at putting thought to things like that, there are people that are, people that are very gifted with it. So sometimes if I'm feeling really patient, really patient, I'll have a couple of my daughters come over and say, I'd like to kind of organize this area. What do you think? Because they're going to, Really go to work. Very gifted. Now, kitchens, closets, garages, attics are breeding grounds for useless junk. You don't need... (laughs) I I might be in trouble here. You call it a fondue pot? Someone gave us one. Several times they've given us fondue pots. And I look at that thing and say, what in the world is that? And she said, that's a fondue pot. I said, I don't even want that in the house. Give it away. Well, it's a nice one. I said, good. Give it to someone you like. (laughs) If you gave us a fondue pot, I just want you to know, thank you. And we gave it to somebody we really like. I don't even know what that thing is, and I'm not going to use it. Period. Well, you need to change, maybe, but I'm not. So. Now, you know, like a year later or five years later, it's still in the box in your kitchen. Turn around and tell somebody, give that thing away. You do not need three fondue pots. You might use one. I don't know for God's sake when, but anyhow. Give it away, sell it, or throw it away. (laughs) Okay. Now, this I know is going to cause some uprisal. Like... What is a cappuccino machine? I know what a drill press is. 
or a pasta maker or a bread machine. If you use it, great. But you don't need six of those. Man, Pastor Isaac, just for your future preparedness, when no one says amen, you've done stepped on toes. Say it again. We're making space for what matters. That, that's, and we're having fun. I am. I hope you are. What's better off? Three fondue pots. Did I say that right? It's scary for me to say something like that in public. Or room for extra boxes of pasta or more green bean jars. Or Hello? Grab a hold of this now. We're working on what matters. Like I said, if you use it, fine. But if it's been sitting there, come on, somebody, a year and a half, you never used it, it's not even out of the box. Psst, go like this. Psst. Invite someone over you really like. Tell them, hey, we want to bless you. And give it to them, all wrapped nice with a bow on it. They're going home saying, I wonder what this is. And he says, that's another fondue pot. We've been giving 40 of those things. Well, Grandpa and Grandma never threw out anything. I know, and they went through the Depression. But I can assure you, you don't need 100 whipped cream tubs. <laughs> you don't need 100 uh, Reader's Digest in the basement. Hello? Turn around to somebody, throw it out. Just because it worked 100 years ago does not mean it's the best idea for today. Praise the Lord. Lumber yards sell all kinds, like Menards or Lowe's or whatever, all kinds of space-saving devices. They're organizers. They're amazing. My daughters are really good at it. You open their closets like, wow, that's really nice. Now, look for untapped space. Garage sellers are good storage. We'll take in mind temperature, moisture, which can be a problem for a lot of things. Uh, but it, that kind of space is good for dry goods, you know, toilet paper, soap, things like that. Hello? Think storage. Say together. Think storage. Build storage. Uh, keep a list of items your family needs. Now, I'm going to try to close here in just a couple of minutes because I, I got to quit. But I need to give you this assignment. So bear with me. Make a list of what your family needs. Say together. Make a list of what we need. And you're going to make a list of what your family eats in a week. And make a list of what your family eats maybe over a couple weeks or possibly a month. Now say this with me. This is what we eat. Come on. This is what we eat. This is what we ate this month. So what do you eat? The snacks, the meals. There's no need to buy what you don't eat. Hello? So if they like potatoes, then get a supply of potatoes and possibly some dehydrated potatoes if you know like you're starving they'd come in handy <laughs> buy what you use or say together or organize arrange praise the lord now that includes some like health care products which i'll give you a list on that later like sh soap shampoo diapers those kind of things now uh, uh, oh boy, let's have the worship team come back. Okay, I'm going to go to this, and I'll, I'll try to close here in just a couple of minutes. Taste is a personal matter. It's very important, though. So, young people, listen. You know, texture, smell, taste, they get it. they're very important. Literally, scientifically, psychologically, those are the things that make us feel safe. I'll tell you this right now. I don't like texture. I don't eat it. Period. You tell me it's good for me all you want. I don't like the texture. I'm not eating that. God bless you. Goodbye. I'm fasting today. <laughs> Hello? A good meal can raise your spirits and provide energy. So why buy something you don't use? Don't. Don't store it in a garage somewhere. Hey, if we have a crisis, we'll eat that. And the kids look in there thinking, oh, God, I hope we don't have a crisis. We die. 
you're not going to contribute to their safety feeding them that stuff in that box that's been up there in the dust for 10 years. I'm telling you, tasting is personal matter. So now, bear with me. Don't get mad at me here for a few minutes. MREs, meals ready to eat. If you're a soldier, you know what it means. It's like, okay, we'll eat that instead of die, but thank God we're going to go to McDonald's someday. Okay. <laughs> I'll cover more on that later. I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, later on about dried foods, frozen food, dehydrated, canned, etc. Now, I want to make a few comments. I'm not a cook. I'm not a chef. Hello? But don't buy me something to stick in the garage I don't like to eat. When we took trips and took all those kids to the mountains, whoever was in charge of cooking, I would tell Pastor Tracy, who was back then a rebel in disguise. But anyway, I would say to her, whoever's buying this food, do not buy off brands. I don't want to be in a mountain in the middle of nowhere with something that tastes like cardboard. Get me Jif or don't buy peanut butter. Hello? Can you imagine telling your kids, we're snowed in for three days and we're going to eat this? And they're like, they're going to try to sneak out to get out to the gas station to buy a candy bar. An MRE will meet your nutri nutritional and calorie needs. And you can buy kits to buy enough of it for a year. A year. It will cost you thousands of dollars. It's very expensive. Hello. Full of salt because it's designed to keep soldiers alive on a battlefield. You feed that to your kids and you're going to have them swinging off the ceiling like Isaac did when he was a boy. It'll cost you a fortune. You're taking notes here. Just buy what you feed them. First in, first out. Have enough for three days. Have enough for two weeks. Have enough for a month or two. Rotate it in, rotate it out. Put it where it's convenient. You may think, well, we don't need to hear this. Yeah, you really do. I can't believe the money people have spent for survival. And if they ate it, they'd die of cholesterol or salt and heart attacks. <laughs> Hello? You ever been in someone's house trying to swallow something that you think came from another planet? I... I I had another idea, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> and you're like, God, give me grace to swallow this. Let my phone go off so I can run away or something, say there's a crisis. <laughs> canned foods is easier. Well, let me tell you about canned foods. Yeah, I'll tell you about canned foods. Readily available, one half the cost or far less. Come on of dehydrated or MREs or whatever, not to mention <laughs> better nutrition. Okay, well, I'm going to have to cover more of this later. But I am having fun. I went on a backpacking trip one time out of, as a senior, and my pack weighed 100 pounds, 100 pounds. Everybody else's pack weighed like 50 pounds or 40 pounds. And we arrived at the first night of camp, and it was heavy. It was heavy, and I was prepared for a week. I think we were gone a week. And they're eating stuff out of a bag. You know, you put water in it and swallow it. And I have ravioli. <laughs> and I have stew. And they're like, and they're like, can we have some of that? I said, yeah, but it's going to cost you. Groceries out here are expensive. I made enough money on that backpacking trip to take care of junior college for six months. <laughs> Let's all stand together. The moral of the story is you're going to store it, make sure you can eat it. Hello? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to close with that. And it may seem like, well, I wanted to learn about preparing for food. You are by organizing. And I have, I'll have to go a lot more. I got a lot more done today than I thought I would, and I hope you enjoyed it. I have. So we'll talk more along these lines, and then I'll actually make a list of some foods. But you are going to make a list now of what you eat for a week, what you ate for two weeks. You're going to actually, hello? 
Oh, by the way, you can throw almost all those cookbooks away you have too. They're wasting space. You never use them. You never use them. You never waste of space. You basically, even though all this option is out there, you'll find that over a period of month, we like these things and we like to eat them consistently and get your kids involved with that. Hello? And you're very practical and you're very wise and that's all we need where it's conveniently to get to. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and tell somebody, we are not in survivalist school here. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. An MRE has its place. If you go to the battlefield and just and eat one. But when I come over, please don't serve me one. I don't mean to complain, but dear Lord, peanut butter and jelly is better than an MRE. Some of you may want to argue that. That's all right. Go ahead. But on the battlefield, I carry Jif and grape jelly. I'm telling you, I could sell it. You could trade a small jar of Jif for dozens of MREs. Okay, well, moving right along. It has its place. I've just never found out where. I'm going to close. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. And as we prepare very practically, involving our family, organizing one closet at a time, one drawer at a time, making room for what we use to have more than enough in a time of trouble to help other people. Let's grab a hold of that and say, God, I like this. Say, God, I like this. I like, I like Campbell's soup, chicken noodle soup. I know it's got a lot of salt in it. I don't eat it every day just when I don't feel good. Hello? I'd take that over an MRE any day and you drink, eat one of those, you're feeling better already. Hello? You'll get to know somebody. You can tell them, go home, get some Campbell's soup. You're like, yeah, I'll be back. All right, well, I got to close. I've kept you too long. The Lord bless you. May the peace of God just rule in your heart. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. You're free to go as the Lord releases you. Thanks a lot. If you want prayer for anything, come on up. The altar is open. Come on up to the line if you want a pastor to pray for you. We love you. God bless you. Amen. What an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. We pray that the worship and the word of the Lord has blessed you and encouraged you right where you are. We're so grateful for the ability that we have to connect. But as we bring this service to a close, I want to take a moment and pray a blessing over you. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for giving us a servant's heart, Lord, that wherever you send us, wherever we find ourselves, Lord, that we would be moved by love and compassion and love towards our neighbor, Father. We thank you for giving us a servant's heart. Thank you, Father, for enabling us to follow the example that you set for us. We pray, Lord, that our actions towards one another of serving, Lord, would speak of who you are in our lives. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing us and giving us opportunities to show the love of Christ towards others. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. And as we bring this service to a close, I want to encourage you, take a moment to pray with those around you. Pray with your family, pray with your church, pray with a group, wherever you may find yourself. And we pray that you have been blessed and encouraged by this word. And we'll see you next time. God bless you.
Thank you for joining us today in our services. We so appreciate what God is doing and we appreciate you watching us online. We also want to take time to invite you to come and visit, come and see and come and join us. We would love to meet you. We appreciate you watching us online, but if you're close enough to come and join our church family when we're here worshiping together, please do. We have a wonderful local church family and a wonderful extended church family that is here for many of our conferences, our school of ministry. You could join us for that as well. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Visit us at whcc.net and get more information. Learn more about the church. Come and see us. God bless you. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you.